Hello everyone and welcome back to the fourth video. Every time I start doing something important I set a timer like this. So let's put it on the side and I spend the last 25 minutes looking at reference, collecting more reference when I am designing a project or working on something. It is so important that I get familiar with what I'm working on and look at all aspects and details of that project. I also found the video on YouTube. Well, so basically what I did, because I know the project, I went to Google, just type the name of the project, go to videos, and I found more footage or more images that will help me in making this as close to reality as possible, because I want to stay true to the design of the architect, because I like it, and yeah, I'm just doing my homework. And what I noticed actually, fun fact about this little project, I know maybe you don't care, but it's okay. Hear me out. Look, in the kitchen, it looks like they did some Photoshop here because we have this type of stuff. So that's why it's important to look for your reference in multiple sources. Now, I'm not gonna make you stare at these images for 25 minutes. What we'll be doing today is exporting this block out to Unreal Engine. I very much prefer, is that even English? When I create a block out of my project, it is very important for me to send that to Unreal Engine as early as possible and just look at my design inside of Unreal, play around because that is extremely helpful. And I highly recommend you do the same. Every time you work on project, once you finish your block out, take that block out and send it to the engine. So in order to do that, and before we do that, I just want to make a duplicate of the floor so we have a ceiling. And everything now is going to stay as a block out. I'm not going to rename my meshes. I'm just going to export this as like temp files. So I will hide my 2D plans and I will hit Alt E. That's another shortcut I use a lot. So instead of going to File, Export, I just hit Alt E. And I will go to where I save my data of my files. I usually under the D or any drive, I have data of math temp. And here I'm going to make a new folder called fourth room. And I will save that as temp fourth R. If you have a newer version of data math, you may not see it here. It might be somewhere in the toolbar. I will update data math on this machine soon. But yeah, just so you know. Now I'm exporting this as data math file. Visible objects, current frame, click OK. We get errors. Let's do my favorite thing. Get out of here, Mr. Errors. And let's open Unreal Engine. I'm going to use Unreal Engine 5.1. If you have or need an update, but you don't want to update, what you can do, just go to the corner on the top right and switch it to 5.1 and click Launch. So we're gonna make new project. All right, we have Unreal Project Browser. I click on Architecture and I'm going to start from blank template. And I will save my project next to my project. So in my production folder, that's how we work in VRD, we will make a new folder, call it UE, and that's for the Unreal Engine project. And I will just copy this location and add the project name as fourth, which we can't start with a number. So the fourth room. Click on create and let's wait. As you're waiting for Unreal Engine to open, you may leave a like or subscribe if you like the video. If you're not subscribed already, I would appreciate it. And here we are in Unreal Engine. I believe you're already familiar with the engine. If not, there are many amazing tutorials on the channel and on our academy for complete beginners. I will leave a link to that in the description. And if you are familiar, let's just keep going. In all cases, you can keep going and follow along. I'm gonna keep it simple. So every time I start a new project, I go to the content folder, I right click here and I create a new folder. And I call that folder underscore projects. That's how we do it internally because we migrate between projects a lot. So I make folder called the fourth room. 
and here I'll make a new folder, call it maps, and another folder for data math import files. Under maps, I'll make a new level, call it main level or the fourth room level or whatever you like. I will double click that and we'll come to the directness. So let's import some meshes, add some lights because it's really spooky here. So data math, click on this button here and let's go to our working folder. So we have data math name and I have my project. Click open and let's set a location to import this file. Go to project, the fourth room, data math. Click OK. We will get this prompt asking us what do we want to import. In this case, we just want the geometry. By default, you have everything enabled. It's up to you to keep it enabled or disabled. I like geometry. Import. There we go. Now, the engine is doing its thing by preparing mesh distance fields. We have our word outliner. We see a data of math actor, and within that actor, we have the nice boxes we've created and some objects of things we detached but did not rename. So let's add some light before we go any further. Let's go to Window and let's go to Environment Light Mixer. That's the easiest way you can add lights. Instead of going to the Create menu, then go to Lights, add a directional light and a skylight and so on. It's just like Environment Light Mixer, Create Skylight, Create Atmospheric Light, Create Sky Atmosphere, Create volumetric cloud and height fog. You can close this and we can see our little nice apartment. Now, something that you need to do when you create a skylight, just click on it, go to the details panel and click on real-time capture. So it would capture the skylight. Very nice. The first thing I like to do when I set this up is adding a post-process volume. So let's go to the create menu here and type post. It will search within that menu and here's our post-process volume. So no need to go to visual effects and click and drag. You can just search for anything you like actually. In menus this would work. Now with our post-process volume selected, let's go to close all of these. There we go. We need the post-process volume settings, infinite extent and bound. So it would affect the whole world. I don't want to scale this up and down to affect the area I'm inside it. That's how post-process volumes work by default. You need to be inside it so it would work. And the next thing, so now it's infinite, we would turn off the auto exposure. And we can do that from the lens exposure metering mode let's set this from auto exposure to manual and the exposure compensation we can increase this so i think a value of like 13 for now should be okay the other thing i want to change is the lens flare it's like really annoying as you can see so if we go to lens flare it's under lens we can decrease the intensity to zero for now, or like very low values, but let's just keep it at zero. And there we go. I wanted to mention that if you don't want, so by the way, I click Control Shift S to save everything. That is so important, not Control S, Control Shift S. I wanted to talk about lighting. We have two methods we can do lighting real quick. I'm just going to make a new folder, call it lights and I'm going to add everything that has to do with lighting within that folder. This can be outside, but it's okay. The other method, if you go to the quickly add to project and go to lights, you will find HDRI backdrop. And we have this because we started our project from the architecture template. We have the HDRI backdrop and we have the sun position calculator. Now, the HDRI backdrop would usually add some light to the scene, but there is a bug on my Unreal version on my PC that prevents that from happening. But if you try it on your computer, you're going to see that, yeah, I have lights here, not me, you. So in my case, I don't want this. I just want the normal default setup and I like that. So now if you press Ctrl L, 
you can change the direction of the sun so if you look at the sun it's gonna hurt your eyes but it's okay it's unreal sorry about that joke and I want to reduce the volumetric fog so the height exponential height fog here I'm going to set the fog density to 0 0.002 which is much less than 10 times less than this value here so we don't see like this I don't know if you can see it yeah you can so you get what I mean it's slightly more realistic as this now the next thing I would do is just add a neutral color to the scene to, to change this uh, checker map and you can tell like the UVs on the meshes we have are so bad so we need to fix these once we finalize the project but now for better light bouncing let's press Control space and I'm going to make a new folder here call it materials and I will create a material underscore base this will be my master material for this project and I will press V and I will call this color I will connect this to this we will set the value of our node here to 0.18 which is gray color not 0.5 and that's in terms of exposure so we're going to set the value of our color here to gray and that is not 0.5 it's actually 0.18 this is gray and if you watch William Fauché video on lighting he talks a little bit about exposure and that particular uh, topic in detail all right once you set this to gray let's click save and close I'm going to press Control space create a material instance and I'm going to call this MI I will select one of my static meshes press ctrl shift a this will select all static meshes in my scene and I will assign that gray material now of course you don't have to do that if you just want to see things without that checker texture you can go to lighting only and you will still see that but still it's nice so what I'm going to do is to click on my directional light and I'm going to increase the indirect light intensity from 1 to something like 5 we can see slightly better what's happening and I'm moving my light around so I can see my interior I love this so if I hide the ceiling we can walk around of course I wish I opened the doors so we can see better what's happening between the rooms but that's what we will be doing as we go so that would be all for this lesson in the next lessons we're going to be adding details so i'm going back to 3ds max to add the rest of the geometry i want and all the little details i want and i will keep updating this project so i hope you found this lesson useful as always if you did leave a like subscribe it helps us a lot and i will see you soon take care